In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this glitch text effect and then we will see how to use an image as a background. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Drool here and as you can see, this is the final output. Now we can create this effect two ways, one using an image as a background, you can also make it black and white or you can use the good old black background. Okay, so to create this, first of all, let's go to file menu and create a new document. And the document size is 1920 by 1080 and the resolution since i'm not going to print it i'm gonna keep it 72 and hit ok so the new document is ready first of all let's double click and unlock it now we need the background to be black so for that select a paint bucket tool right click and you can find the paint bucket here then make sure you have black color here and then go and fill it now let's go and add the text. So for that, select your type tool from here. And in the font, I'm using Sugastyle Millennial. If you want to use this, the download link is in description. Please read the rules before using the font. And also before you type, make sure the color here is white so you can see what is going on. So I'm going to do a click and type the font. Let's go and confirm it. Now it's really small so we can not see it. So I'm going to press Ctrl T hold my shift key and drag it from a corner so it's really big and nice i think this is big enough let's go and confirm it now i want this g to be capital and you can simply just hold your shift key when you type the word or you can double click on this t and just select your t and then click on this little box so it will open up all the text options and here go and click on this double t so it will make it capital and then go and confirm it and let's close it now we need this to be in complete center. So for that make sure you have your text layer active here. Then press Ctrl A to make a selection and then select move tool from here. And in the options here select second one and then second last. And to remove the selection go to select and deselect. Now before we do anything I'm gonna go and turn this font into a smart object. So select your text layer, right click and select convert to smart object. Now we're gonna go and make two copies of it. So to make a copy, go and press Ctrl J. Now double click on this first copy here and name it Cyan. And after that make another copy of it, Ctrl J and double click on this name and name it Red. Now for a moment, go and hide eye of both of this layer. So we only have the original glitch layer active, okay? Now to create the glitch effect, first of all, let's go and add a little bit of motion in the font. So for that, go to filter, blur and select motion blur. In the motion blur on the original glitch, I'm gonna go and keep the angle zero. So it's completely horizontal. And in the distance, I think this is too much. So I'm gonna go and make it 10 to 15. So let's try 10. Okay, this looks good. Go and hit okay. After that, go and activate your cyan layer, turn it on. Then right click on your cyan layer and select blending options. And in the blending option, you have your different channels here, red, green and blue. Now to achieve cyan color, we have to turn off our red channel. So turn it off. It will show red in the box here. Then go and hit OK. After that, go and move your uh, text a little bit here. To do it, make sure you have selected your move tool. Then just go and move it a little bit to the downside or upside wherever you prefer. So I'm going to go and keep it a little bit down. Now we will also apply motion blur here. So for that go to filter, blur and select motion blur. But this time I'm gonna go and change the angle to somewhere around like minus 45. So it's in the cross and in the distance I'm gonna go and increase it to somewhere around like 30% and then go and hit OK. Now we will apply another filter to give it a little bit more wavy feeling. So for that go to filter, distort and here you have this option called shear. Click on that. Now at first your line might be straight but as you can see I tried to create an S shape uh, and don't try to make it really big because it's way too powerful and your text will be way too distorted. We don't want it too much. So try to keep it in control and create a really really tight S shape something like this. So this is good enough and in the areas make sure you have repeat edge pixel then go and hit OK. So the cyan is done, now let's go and add the red color. So activate your red layer, turn it on, then right click and select blending options. Now to make it red, go and hide your green and blue channel. So it will show cyan here for now, then go and hit OK. Now make sure you again have your move tool and this time go and move it a little bit more upwards. So 
so this is looking good and we will also apply motion blur here as well so for that go to filter blur and select motion blur and here in the angle instead of minus 45 go and keep it simply 45 so it is in complete opposite direction of your blur in cyan so then go and hit ok now we will make copy of red so for that go and press ctrl j so we have a copy and then double click on the name and rename it to red wind now on this layer as you guessed it we will apply wind effect so for that go to filter stylize and here go and select wind here in the method i'm gonna go and keep it wind and the direction will be from the left then go and hit ok now as you can see the effect is way too strong and it doesn't look that good so in the opacity we're gonna go and make it somewhere around like 25 30 so let's try 25 percent so as you can see now it looks really subtle and blends in better so all the text work is done now let's go and add the particles so for that go and create a new blank layer and select your marquee tool from here right click and select the rectangular one and before you start making selections make sure you have the second option selected so this will allow you to make multiple selections at once now this is really big so i'm gonna go and press ctrl z average size should be somewhere around this something like this you can make them square or maybe really thin line or something like that and fill up the area mostly uh, on the horizontal line of the text you can also add some of them you know near the font or maybe overlapping them a little bit but try to keep this one really small so we can read the font properly selection is done now we have to fill in white color so before you do that make sure you have your blank layer active now in the color here make sure you have white color in your foreground and then go and press alt backspace so it will fill in white color wherever you have the selection now to get rid of the selection you can go to select and deselect now we will apply motion blur here as well now before you apply the blur turn it into a smart object so right click and convert to smart object then go to filter blur and here go and select motion blur and in the motion blur angle will be zero so it goes with the original white text and in the distance keep it somewhere around you know 25 or maybe 20 let's try 20 okay this looks fine then go and hit ok now let's go and add a little bit noise so it looks more real so for that go and create a new blank layer and we have to fill in black color here so go and select your paint bucket and in the color here make sure you have black and fill it after then go to filter noise and select add noise and in the amount go and keep it somewhere around like you know 15 20 percent so i'm gonna go and try 20 percent looks good uh, in the distribution make sure it's uniform and the monochromatic is off so you have colorful noise then go and hit ok and after that in the blending option go and make it to difference now it's really strong so in the opacity go and make it somewhere like 40 50 percent let's try 45 looks pretty good i'm not sure if you can see it properly on the recording but as you can see it gives it really subtle feeling on the edges and overall it looks nice so this is the effect for the black background but you can also use image as a background so for that go and active your black background here this one then go to file place and in the place go and select any image that you want to use as background and place it and then go and make it big enough so it covers the background hold your shift key when you do it so it stays in proportion now problem we have here is that the because of image it's becoming a little bit harder to focus on text so to make a solution of that i'm gonna go to filter blur and apply a little bit motion blur but this time i'm gonna go and keep my angle to 90 degree so it is complete opposite of my white text and all the particles and then go and increase it enough so you can focus on the text better so somewhere around like 90 percent or 85 looks good then go and hit ok so this way you can use image as a background and you can also make it black and white to pop out this red and cyan color better to do that go and create new adjustment layer from here and select black and white so it will make it black and white and you can now focus on the font a lot better and to make it more contrasty do you know this noise layer you can increase its opacity so it will make the image darker and font looks better and you can also use it as a color 
Okay, so this is something that I forgot to mention in my original recording. So here it is. You can actually update your font and that is the reason we turned this into a smart object. So make sure you have your first white layer active. Then double click on this thumbnail here. So this box will come up, hit OK. As you can see, it basically opened the font in your document. So here you can update it. Just double click on this T and type whatever you want. So let's type exotic and confirm it. Now you have to make sure that font is inside the document. So to fix that, go and press Ctrl T, hold your shift key and put it inside the document. Once this is done, go to file and save, then go and close it. And just like that, we updated the font. It's super easy. And if you want to make the font bigger, just hold your Ctrl key and select all the layer with text in it. And then press Ctrl T, it, the box will come up, hit OK. Then just hold the shift key and make it big however you like and confirm it. And just like that you can make your font bigger. So that's it. This is the final output. So I really hope that you guys learned something from this video. And if it did, hit that like button. And if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, ask me in comment section below. Plus you can also click on that subscribe button. So every time I upload a new video, you will get the update. Plus clicking on that subscribe button will take you to my YouTube channel. Where I have tons of Photoshop tutorials waiting for you. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.